Hey all you cool cats and kittens, welcome to lesson one for chemistry. This is our last week of materials. So we'll take a look at neutralization reactions this week. I want to quickly review the relationship between acids and bases with you. I know we've talked about this the last two weeks, um, but it's kind of the point of our, of our lesson this week. Um, that we said acids are compounds that donate protons, so these H plus ions, and bases are ones that increase this hydroxide ion, okay? So the relationship between them, when you start mixing them, which is what we're talking about this week, is that they form water, H2O, okay? So here are your two H's, the H plus from the acid and the H in the hydroxide. That's your H2O, all right? So that when you mix an equal amount of acid and an equal amount of base, you should end up with a neutral solution, which is why we call those neutralization reactions, okay? Now, I want to look at three example problems with you. Um, we talked last week about this being a teeter-totter. If you have exactly equal H and OH, okay, you're neutral. If you have a little bit more H or a lot more H. So this first sample problem, number one, says if there are slightly more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions in a solution, it's most likely to have a pH of blank, okay? So slightly more H plus, we're talking here on the pH scale, okay? Where you do still have some of that base in there, but you have a little bit more on this part. So we are not talking about a pH of one. If your pH is over here at one, you're talking about having significantly more hydrogen compared to hydroxide. pH of five looks okay, so I'm not gonna cross that one out. pH of seven can't be our answer because I would need to have exactly equal amounts of H and OH. And pH of 12, I would need to have mostly OH and only a little bit of H in order for it to be a pH of 12. So yes, I would say a pH of five would be my best answer. Okay, that's gonna be a solution that has a little bit more acid than base in it. Question two says if there are significantly less hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. So if we're looking at this continuum between acids and bases, we're looking over here, that there are significantly less hydrogen ions compared to hydroxide ions. So that's absolutely not a pH of one, because that would be significantly more, right? It's not gonna be pH of five, it's not going to be pH 7 where they're equal. I'd say pH 12 is the best answer of those four choices, that there are significantly less hydrogen ions compared to hydroxide ions. And then number three, if there is an equal concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, the solution would have a pH of, and that is the definition of a neutral solution, that there are equal hydrogen and hydroxide ions, because then they just form H2O. Okay, so pH of 7. All right, you'll notice questions like that on your homework checks and your end of the week quiz where they're asking you kind of those proportions. And like I said, just think about it as a teeter-totter. Now this one, number three, is right where we're starting with going into this next idea of neutralization reactions. That you have an equal amount of a strong acid and a strong base will produce a neutral solution because the H and the OH make water, okay? We call those neutralization reactions because they neutralize. Um, that word neutralize, if you're watching, I don't know, like Avengers or some kind of like cop show or something, you say the threat has been neutralized, Thanos has been neutralized, right? It means it's not dangerous anymore, okay? So to neutralize an acid and a base means they're not dangerous anymore. You've mixed them into something that's safe to, to handle and be around, okay? A neutralization reaction. In neutralization reactions, you have to have an acid reacting with a base, and always the two products are water, H2O, and some kind of salt. Okay. Now remember when we say salt, I'm not talking about what you put on your french fries, I'm talking about an ionic compound. So metal, non-metal, right? Positive charge, negative charge. And we'll take a look at a couple of those here in a second. So here I have the beginning of a neutralization reaction. How can I tell? Well, I've got a compound that starts with H, so I know that's an acid. I've got a compound that ends in OH, so I know that one's a base. So anytime you have an acid and a base react, you know it's going to be neutralization. What happens to those is they're going to dissociate in water, which remember just kind of means dissolving with a charge. So if you put these two chemicals in a solution, they're gonna break apart into their ions. 
okay? That Na is going to come apart and all of this. And then they rearrange to form a salt and a water, HOH, which is really just H2O, okay? So an acid plus a base makes salt and water. Now, if you remember from, golly, it was probably our last unit of first semester. So right before Christmas break, we did a unit on reactions and balancing. This is a double replacement reaction where you have two compounds switching what's in front or switching what's in back, okay? So it's a special kind of double replacement reaction that we call a neutralization reaction. And we'll talk more about that in lesson two this week, okay? Let's look at some more examples. So choices, A, B, C, which one is the neutralization reaction? All right, well, you have to have an acid plus a base makes water and salt. So this first one, I definitely have an acid, and I definitely have water, but I don't have a base, so that's not the answer. B is not neutralization. It's a synthesis reaction, actually. And C, I see acid, H, base, OH. I see water at the end, and there's my ionic salt. So C would be what we'd pick on the homework check. Alrighty, just one more thing to look at together. Neutralization reactions. Um, mixing acids and bases. Uh, it's dangerous. Don't mix things together. Don't mix things together. Oh my goodness. Especially underneath your sink, right? Mixing certain chemicals, bleach and ammonia, it makes mustard gas. You will die. It is so dangerous. Don't mix chemicals at home. Um, be careful when you're trying to like clean out your bathtub, okay? True story. Um, but in a lab, okay, when you're intentionally doing this, mixing acids and bases together in a solution affects the overall pH of the solution. Just like mixing um, red and blue paint, you get some kind of purple. If you add in more blue, then it's like a bluish purple, right, or a reddish purple. You do kind of have this cumulative combined effect on the overall pH of a solution. So we're going to look at a couple sample problems together to talk about combining pHs. So here are four sample problems, okay? The first one says if I mix 100 milliliters of a pH 5 solution with 100 milliliters of a pH 9 solution, what's the resulting pH going to be, okay? Now what's important about this is that I'm mixing equal amounts, okay? So if I mix an equal amount of these two pHs, What's my combination going to be? So here, I sketched out a quick pH scale for us. And I'll see if I can find a pencil or something. Okay? So if I mix an equal amount of a 5 and a 9, they're going to meet in the middle, which would be a pH of 7. Okay? And that would neutralize, and then both of those solutions would now be safe. Okay? In theory, at least. Don't drink it. Um... We once had a chemistry teacher, and I shouldn't say this, but I once worked with a chemistry teacher who had students do this in high school, where they would have students mix a 1 and a 13 on the pH scale, both of which can kill you. And ideally, if the students do everything right and the teacher did everything right, the solution would just be salt water and the students could lick it or drink it. Um, no. Oh my gosh. So, 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 so bad. I had to get that blocked because, no, yes, in theory, this would perfectly make a seven. But you don't drink and lick stuff in lab. That is like safety rule number one. Don't pour chemicals in your eyes and don't taste stuff. Duh. Okay. Anyways, sidebar, right? Question two says, I have a neutral solution. So I'm going to start out like this. I have a neutral solution. Let me find a better color. So I'm starting right here. I have a neutral solution, and I add a solution of an unknown pH to it. The final solution is now pH of 10. Was the solution that I added acidic or basic? Okay, So I was here, and I moved here. So I had purple paint, and now my paint is more blue. So what did I add to it? I must have added something blue to it, something basic. Okay, So I must have added something basic to that neutral solution if it became basic. Some of you, this feels very obvious. You can probably go through quickly. Some of you, this seems a little more strange. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll get it by the end of these practice. Okay, solution A has a pH of 11. So I'm going to put an A right here. Solution A has a pH of 11. When I add solution B to it, 
the resulting solution is pH 8. So I'm just going to put a star here. Okay. Was solution B more acidic or more basic? Well, if I went here, and now I'm here, then I must have mixed something there. So they meet in the middle. So if solution A was basic, now I'm more neutral, that's because I added something acidic to it. I must have added a 4 or a 5 acid to it. Okay. A, I'm just going to put right here. B must have been right here. That's why they met in the middle. Question four. Oh, I love this question. Question four says the body works hard to keep the pH of blood between 7.35 and 7.45. That's true in physiology. Okay. If your blood gets any more acidic or any more basic, you'll black out and then get brain damage very quickly. Okay. If your blood pH rises to 7.65, which ion does the body need to remove to bring the pH back down to the correct range? So let's just real quick sketch this out, okay? I need to be at 7.35 to 7.45, okay? This is where it's safe for my blood to exist in a very, very narrow range. My blood became too basic I'm up at a 7.65. So what do I need to do to move back down towards neutral or towards acid? Okay? And specifically it asks, what ion does the body need to remove? So if my blood is too basic, I need to get rid of the base ion. A, B, C, and D. Right here. My blood is too basic, so I need to remove that. Okay? I could have also said which ion should the body add to bring the pH back down. Then I would say I would need to add this acid ion right there. Okay? This one is also acid, but I won't ask you. This one's not even an ion, so that's not our answer. Okay. All right, take a look at the homework tutorial video if you need help on that homework check. Good job, y'all. Just one more lesson after this.